Hi guys, in this video, I will demonstrate how did I create this multiple line user interface materials and how did I expose different uh, parameters to let users get more control of the line looks. So for example, user can change the animation speed by changing speed X and speed Y to make the line looks animated. Our user can change the color of the lines based on maybe different situations. Our user can change the noise, like uh, how intensity of the noise to apply on top of the line. If I decrease the number, it will get more solid lines, and the increased number will have more noise impact on it. And also how the look of the noise. So to decrease the scale of the noise is get this look and increase will get more dashed line noise style. Also I can configure the thickness of the line or how many rows to display in this area. So if you have text on top of the line user need to change this number to match to match the text to make text align on top of the, li the, the lines so that's how it work and uh, let's have a look how did I create them first let's go to the Unreal Market and then find out this UI Material Lab project it's a free project from Unreal Online Learning Inside this project, it's got many very useful UI material functions that uh, we can use to create our own materials. After create the Material Lab project, then we can go to the content browser and select material function folder, right click, click migrate. And here list all the material functions we can use in our own project. We can migrate it into our project and then we can start to create our own materials. After we import all these material functions to our project, then we can go back to our project, start to create a materials. And um, in this output node, we first click detail. In the material domain selections, we select user interface and blend mode to translucent. So in this output node, we can only have this final color and the opacity in the screen position node. And this output is only for the user interface usage. Now let's create the solid lines like this one. To make this work, I using the pinpoint node from Material Lab. This function using user need to give a grading values to this value node and we can get gradients from texture coordinates node with the component mask node and based on which channel you select you will get a different type of gradients like if I choose the right channel the X directions you will get a horizontal gradient value and put this grading value into the value node, this pinpoint function will output a result like this. This will try to mirror the gradients from left to right. And uh, we can use in this subdivision subdivision nodes to get how many times we want to repeat this process. So if I change to two, it will repeat twice. In the change to 10, it will repeat 10 times to get 10 vertical bars. And uh, if I need to get a horizontal bus, so I just simply change to using the green channel. That is the Y directions from top to down. And uh, now the results will get all the horizontal bars. Because this is gradient values and the uh, value will smoothly transfer from black to from black to white. And I can filter out the most of the black value and only leave the white value to get a single 
smaller horizontal lines I can use in the smooth node, smooth step node, and put the result into the value. Leave the max to one to to only leave the totally white part, and uh, change the minimum value to closer to white. Then it will filter most of the black part. So if I change to show border, you will see the first line is not start from the very top and also the bottom line is not finished on the bottom. To change this behavior, I can using the reverse result. Basically, it will this one will change from black to white. So this is Using this result, it will start from white, then black, then white. So if I change the inverse result to the value part, now we can get these horizontal lines start from the very top and finish on the very bottom. So this way we can much easier to position our lines in, in the user widget to align with the text. And, um, I can expose this minimum value to a parameter. So user can change this value in the material instance. So to make it more user friendly, I can make it one minus. So what it did is to start from a smaller value, we'll get more thinker more think think lines and uh, to increase this value you will get a bigger lines so that's it's pretty much i did for this this line sections and the final step is to change the using this named named the decla declaration node to create a, a, a custom node and uh, this this node can be used anywhere in my materials. So, for example, if I want using the result from here, I don't need to drag this node to different spot. I can recall this rename the node here and uh, make this graph more cleaner. Next is to create a noise. We can using the noise and combine with the solid line to get the results we want. And I create this noise functions. So this function can be used anywhere in on my materials. In this function I expose the speed x and y to define the movement of the noise if I need. And also using this noise scale node to change the size of the noise. So this function can be used anywhere and it's very helpful functions. So let's have a look how did I create them. And uh, to make this noise function, I start with the noise node. This node will let uh, us to pro procedurally to create noise without any texture. And uh, to pre start from here to preview, it's get a weird result here. It's because we didn't give the right position. So to, to fit in the right position, we can use in the texture coordinates. And, uh, Break it, uh, make break to two components, and this position need uh, flow three. So we make flow three. So here and R to X, G to Y. So now we get uh, a reasonable noise here, and we can tweak these values. So first, I need to do is to change the output minimal from minus one to zero. And um, like everything else, I can leave default. Uh, if you like, you can choose between different type of noise. So I'm just using the simplest one. Um, and the scale, will, if I give, say, 4, it will make a more, noise, a more reasonable noise here. So it, I want to expose this noise note and to read these tips here. So you say, can also be done with uh, multiply on the position. So that is exactly what we need. So I change back to one and um, give a float value, default to four. 
and multiply this value with the result here. Multiply. So, with that, we can expose this scale parameter to the parameter we made for these materials. So, I can change to 8, it's got a smaller noise. Next thing is to animate noise. So to animate it, I can using the panel node here. Link with the coordinate. And, um, create two parameter for x and y. Make flow two. So this will define the speed. If I change to change any number, it will animate my noise here. Okay, and after this animation, next thing what I want to do is to fix the aspect ratio because many times my widget will not like this perfect square. Say if I change the preview size to 600 to 200, you will see it's very noticeable stretch uh, in the result noise. To fix that, I can using the UI scale function from Material Lab to scale one side of my coordinates to fix the ratio. And I can get the ratio value from the aspect ratio. Here I can using the horizontal values, uh, component mask, and only using the X value. This will become the aspect ratio. So I name to name to node to container ratio and to make it the x. So this is my x is the width. What the width is defined to one named to width, and to get height, I can multiply the width by the aspect ratio. So a container. Ratio. Multiply this. So the result here will be the height. Okay, so named to height. Aspect. So this bit will give me the right aspect. Uh, and I can link. With using this weighted height to scale my coordinates here, I can link in between of my coordinates and um, make float to and using this in height. Okay, so now, if I give it a bigger number. It's too big. Eight. So, this is a more reasonable noise pattern, and it's not stretched. So this is pretty much how I make my noise function, and I wrap this one to the noise function. So this is noise function is using exactly the same method, and uh, I just uh, to expose those parameters so let's the scale to the scale and um, speed x y to x y and also the coordinates for this function input and, uh, so here is the noise and i can using this one to generate the pattern i need the final part is to combine all everything the lines and the noise into the final mask and get the final result. So here I using the lines and the noise node created in previous sections and I using this noise intensity float values to configure how strong the noise will apply to the line and uh, if I reduce the number it will become more darker and give a bigger value we have more white area and um, this line to subtract the noise 
we will become will become the result like this. So because the subtract will possible get a minimum val a values less than zero depends on your intensity settings. So I am using the saturate node to filter out anything below zero. This one is for to remove the top part of the line. So if I open this border, you will see the first line is here and many times I position my text on start on the second line. I never need the, the, the first line to display. So this is what's doing here. I using the this mask to get a black a little bit black on top and using step node to give a very small value for the y. So everything less than this zero point zero three will become black and the rest will become total white like this. So the only top bit is the black and I'm using the minimal node to remove the top black part. So this is the result and the remove here. So you will notice that the, the top line is disappeared. So this is with the first line and this is without first line. So this is the final result. I put this alpha values to the opacity node and uh, give a color to control color of the line and uh, make this to parameter. So here is the final parameters I made and the uh, start from top is the line thickness and how many rows I need and speed x, y and the uh, noise scale also the noise intensity and the uh, last one is the color. I get this multiply in no, uh, multiply materials in the stuff from here I can create a, a material instance and using this instance to apply to all my user widget. Last one is regarding how we can use these uh, multiple line materials and uh, for example for different uh, user widgets we got different height and uh, we don't need to create multiple material instances to give the right how many rows you want to display. To achieve that, um, I can get the real height of my panel. So in this case, is my description panel. And in each tick, I inspect the real height of the values, y, y values, and I catch the y values if the value is different from my last value. I will to get these dynamic materials, there's multiple line materials from here, and change the rows with the new value. So this is a value I guess is roughly right for how many pixels in my text for each row and using the total height divide this number. I can get roughly how many rows I need for this material and uh, this is uh, how it works. So again show you that so this is dynamically changed. Um, it's work perfect for a fixed screen size so it's still okay if you not stretch too much it will still roughly get the right position relative to my text. So I think that's all for today and uh, hope it can help on your project and um, hope we can see you next week and uh, I will be looking for some other material, interesting materials for next week, maybe this background, I think it's, I use this background a lot so I think I will make another video about this in next week. So thank you for watching and uh, hope can see you guys in next week. Bye.